great tips for family members that are dealing with financial planning as it relates to a child with LGS. Yeah, so children with uh, any disability, it's important to think ahead um, for the financial future. And I think a good way to go is to, to speak to a special needs advocate or a lawyer about the future of uh, those finances. Things like special needs trusts and um, living expenses for when they get older are important topics. Sam, have you considered that at all in your planning? I know DeMarcus is only 10, but what have, you, what have your thoughts been about that? Yes, we have. We took his um, college fund um, just recently um, and put it in an income fund where, um, just as you were saying, Christina, at a certain age, it's like a, um, he will be accessing if he doesn't have a job. We just plan where he'll be getting a certain amount of income monthly. And that was one of my concerns, that if something happened to me, um, is my son going to be dependent on someone else? Where is his income going to come from? And that's something that we went ahead and did already. Are there employment opportunities? There are. And um, the local service coordinator may be able to help you find some type of assisted employment or vocational type of employment opportunities for individuals with LGS. They will depend on the skill level, but there are um, places out there that really encourage um, businesses to hire individuals with disabilities. And employment isn't just receiving a paycheck. It's a, it's, it's a feeling of um, being self-sufficient and accomplishing something, and that's really important in people with disabilities. Dr. Roach, so, so what should families know about then estate planning? I usually tell them to start as early as they possibly can. And there's a, a reality involved in that because if they wait until their child is 25 or 30, they're likely to be 65 or 70, and so the earlier the better. And I will often bring that up even at a very young age, you know, three, four years of age. I pick my time, you know, when maybe when the initial uh, shock wave is, is over and, and the family is asking about long-term prognosis and so on and maybe this is a good time to to talk about some things you need to be doing. It would be very helpful I think if more parents in this situation would go ahead and get a formal guardianship arrangement so that there's no question you know who's in charge and who who is uh, making the decisions and whom we're supposed to talk to. When do you think that process should start for parents, the legal process? Well, the legal process for guardianship should also start earlier. If I were to give you an age, I would say maybe 12 to 14, just to get everything in order. Okay. It's very scary if your child turns 18 and you haven't gone through that guardianship process. Now, what's going to happen if the child has to go to the emergency room or something happens where you can't be their voice? Um, because you're not legally able to. It's a very scary situation for parents, so it's better to be much more prepared early on. When an individual turns 18, they become an adult, and if the parents don't file for guardianship, they don't really have a voice or somebody that is their main uh, protector or caregiver, so to speak. So parents and caregivers should really plan ahead and make sure that they have um, a secondary guardian in place God forbid they uh, pass on before the planning has taken place. It should go to the person who is best suited to meet the child's needs. Mm -hmm. uh, most of the time, this is the parents, but right. not always. So, but I would agree with Christina. The one absolute thing is don't just assume somebody's going to be willing to do this and, and put, say, a sibling's name down on the uh, mm -hmm. on the document and and it gets blessed without their knowing it because. Uh, if this ever comes up, that, I mean, first off, you owe it to that person to bring them into it. Right. Secondly, you're putting down a name that you haven't actually gotten some kind of confirmation on. So that's, an, that's not a good plan. I mean, it needs to be ironclad. And for, and for our family, um, I had to sign some documents and get it notarized that I would take my brother, me and my brother would share his care. Right. Um, and that was a discussion that we had as a family you know, years ago.